So today, what we're gonna cover is the difference between, say, this Netgear R 6700 and the Luxol WS250, uh, Epic 3, and XAP1510 wireless access point and the differences between the two and why you should really care. So I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today. So first and foremost, I'm going to talk about some of the networks that you may have at home and kind of the performance levels of those networks of that hardware that you may have. And these are commonly found pieces of hardware in homes today. So what I would consider to be a basic network setup would be you've kept the service providers main equipment. Maybe it's an all in one combo. Maybe you've bought something like this and it's supplying your whole home. And it says it will do 1,500, 2,000 square feet, no problem. You could also be using a Wi-Fi extender. Maybe you have that plugged in on the other side of your house. Maybe you're using uh, just a store bought, a third party all in one unit because you were told to not rent because it's a trap. All of those things are generally considered, you know, base level network equipment. And that looks a little something like this guy here. This is the Netgear R6700. So if you're like me and you thought maybe, hey, well, I have a small 1,000 square foot apartment, smaller home, all I really need is one of these bad boys and I hook it up uh, to my Comcast service and my entire home is gonna be filled with awesome Wi-Fi. Well, let's be honest, you're probably not getting the best performance that you can. Now, I'm not talking about people that are getting 25, 50, maybe even 100 megabits per second. I'm talking about the people that are paying for two, three, four, 500 megabits per second and up. Even those at one gigabit that are utilizing hardware like this. If you're paying for service at about 70 to $100 a month and you're using Wi-Fi on most of your devices, you're probably getting 500 megabits per second. Well, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. That's 50% of what you're paying, you're leaving on the table. That's $300 a year that you're spending on network that you're not getting, which leads me to my conclusion which is if you're leaving $300 on the table every year, you can afford to buy something like this and keep it for the next three to five years without any hurt to your pocket. A couple features you won't get on this is multiple input, multiple output. What does that mean? Well, that means that it's not really geared to be able to handle different instances of devices uh, and separate out the performance so you're getting the best ratio to each device. For example, if you have one device using 100 megabits per second of speed because you're gaming and you're downloading, you're doing all this stuff and it's peak performance, well, if two more devices log in, this guy is gonna cut it into thirds and give every single device the same amount. So what would I consider an intermediate device? Well, an intermediate device would be something where you do utilize some of the previous, definitely not the all-in-one units, but you're using things like this router, AC1200 and above. You have your own modem, you have your router, and maybe you're hardlining some equipment. So you're plugging multiple ethernet cables into the back of this router and you're running them to your devices. Uh, that way your main devices are, are getting priority speeds, fast, uh, reliable connections, and then all of your connected devices where you're not really utilizing a lot of internet um, are, are going to be used by this device. Now that would be intermediate. And of course, that brings us to the top level devices. And that would be things where you have your whole house wired uh, for Cat6, Cat5e, something along those lines where you can hardwire. Top level, there's a lot of people out there that still have just a basic router and modem, and then they hardwire some things uh, to the network. And you might be using an access point. No matter where you go, you're getting a strong signal, whether it's on the 2.4 bandwidth or the five bandwidth, right? And that would be Oh, a top level, right? Top level for most people. That's where most people would stop. 
but I'm not most people. And if you're watching, I doubt you're most people too, because if you're a streamer, if you're a gamer, if you have streaming services like Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, if you're using smart lights, if you're using sound bars or speakers that have smart capability, then you're above somebody who's utilizing their network for maybe business Zoom calls. So if you're doing any type of gaming, content creation, smart home, home theater setup, home speakers, this is the network you wanna get. And that brings me to the last portion uh, of networks. And the top level, the pro networks, would be something along the lines of a network uh, that has switches, wireless access points, hardwired ethernet, uh, and you're tying it all back into one router, right? one point that controls the network and all the other access points that control devices, latency, speeds, prioritization, and other things that this guy right here, this Luxel AC3100 router, uh, it does out of the box and you really don't have to do much to set that up. So who the heck is Luxel and why do you care? Well, Luxel is a brand that creates premium home networks. They're meant for large homes or small homes uh, that are power users where you're utilizing things like video and music and multiple devices. Think of it as a computer. You go buy a computer that's 130 bucks. Uh, what's the processor gonna be capable of? It's probably gonna be capable of browsing the internet. And that's about it. And that's essentially what this guy is. It's you know a dual core processor meant to handle all the bandwidth and, and, and capabilities of the router. Well, you get about five, six, seven, eight, nine devices on this guy, which most people have, mind you. It's gonna start lagging. It's gonna fall behind. It's not gonna know who to prioritize to because it just doesn't have the capability. So we're gonna set this aside because we've determined, hey, this is basically a $130 computer, basically a Chromebook. And over here, what we have is about an $800 kit. Now this $800 kit is the equivalent of something like a MacBook Pro. Comparing the two, there's really no comparison. They're in two totally, totally different leagues. And if you have one and not the other, you're probably not in this league. So as I did my research, because I was frustrated with my computer constantly dipping frames in game, taking forever to load, taking forever to download, and not getting the reported speeds that I wanted, uh, I found Luxel and the WS250. And I figured, hey, this is a great opportunity to see how big of a difference it would make for me to do this because we spent thousands we spent thousands of dollars on our gaming devices and our smart home and our uh, different awesome products like speakers and the one thing we always forget is what is at the heart the beating soul of every single device and that's our network so what i found was things like roaming what is roaming what is roam assist Well, essentially, Roam Assist is simple. It's a thing that Luxel integrates into their products much better than everybody else. Roam Assist follows your phone throughout your house, mobile devices, right, as they move between different parts of the home, and it'll switch from one of the access points to uh, the router. Whatever you're closest to, whatever has the strongest network, it's gonna make sure that it follows you and doesn't put you on a speed that is low. The XWR3150 is a four port gigabit uh, router as a four by four multiple input, multiple output uh, antenna built into it. The XAP has a three by three multiple input, multiple output antenna in it. And we'll get into that a little bit later and what that means for you guys. Uh, but the kit again was about $798. Uh, it comes with the two devices, all the power connectors that you need. It comes with two, cat 5e e cables and of course the instructions on how to set it up now there are some features of this kit that blow a standard router and range extender out of the water so a wireless extender just repeats a signal 
If your signal is, uh, you know, 20 feet one direction and where it picks it up at that 20 foot mark is only 20 megabits per second, then it's only repeating a 20 megabits per second signal. In order to change that, you either need larger antennas for those two to communicate, which range extenders don't typically have, or you need a direct wired connection. And that's what this kit utilizes is a direct wired connection. That way this uh, access point is actually receiving the full gigabit speed that my internet service provider is sending to my home. And it's pretty simple. It acts as a secondary wireless access point. It does the same exact thing your router does, but it's not meant to handle the load of distributing all of the different processes uh, to different access points or different devices, right? Now it does act as somewhat of a switch because you can plug ethernet directly into it, uh, but it's not meant to process the heavy loads of your entire network and distribute it throughout your entire home. Now, a couple things that I wanna talk about here. Mesh networks don't do exactly what this does, so to speak. Now, if you get something like uh, the Eero Mesh Pro style system, you can wire it like this, make the original node the router, and then wire different wireless access points via direct connection over ethernet. But uh, what it doesn't do as well is process the capability, process uh, the functions of the network. Luxel is going to do that a bit better because they have a better processor on the inside. They also utilize something that's called 4x4 multiple input, multiple output. 4x4 means it will run four instances, uh, multiple devices on each instance, and give a separate priority to each one of those four antennas. Now the wireless access point, this is called the XAP1510 access point from Luxel, is going to have a three by three antenna, which is phenomenal because that means it's gonna do three instances with three different priorities, all within just one small little access point for a different part of the home. It has wireless data transfer speeds of 3,100 megabits per second, which is insane. You can locally get up to 10 gigabits per second uh, transfer speeds with the router that's in this kit. I mean, that's CAT6 capability built into this router. Not many have that. This Netgear right here is one gig speed. That's the maximum I can get. So if you're looking to build a server, you're looking to do networking throughout your entire home and you want to keep it simple, this is the way to go. So another thing that I want to mention that is very important with this particular router that other routers don't have is beam forming technology. What does that mean? Well, it means it's not sending out just an orb to cover the whole home, right? It's not just going, hey, here's a blanket signal. It's just as strong everywhere. Uh, here you go. And it's covering my garage. 50% of the time where there's absolutely nothing going on. No, it's gonna say, hey, we have devices over here, we have devices over here, we have devices up here. We're gonna send the strongest signals out these directions. I know I'm making a lot of hand gestures here. I'm sorry, you guys. It's gonna send signals out to the directions of the devices that are utilizing the network. And that way, those devices are getting the strongest, most stable signal in your garage while it has nothing going on is not getting the same signal that your phone is, which doesn't make any sense. And that's what regular networks do. The last thing I'll talk about here before we get into the installation process and how easy it was for me is this Luxel four port PoE switch. And this is important. Switches are very important because they will be able to send out hardwired connections to all different areas within your home. Now I have four Cat 5e cables going to different areas throughout the home. Uh, which Cat5e is capable of one gig speeds, right? So I need to make sure I get a switch that's capable of one gig speeds. Now, if you have Cat6, uh, you can obviously get much more than that. Uh, and I do plan to do Cat6, maybe not in this space that I'm in now. So I wanna have equipment that will upgrade with me. That being said, I do wanna clarify something. If you have wireless throughout your whole home, unless you're using Wi-Fi 6, if you're using Wi-Fi, a previous version of Wi-Fi, uh, then you're not getting one gigabit speeds over that Wi-Fi. And if your device isn't using Wi-Fi 6, you're not definitely not gonna get one 
gig speeds to that device. So keep in mind, if you're paying for gig speed internet and you're connected uh, utilizing a uh, non-gigabit capable router, whether it's direct connected or not, or you're utilizing wireless for all of your capabilities, you're not getting gig speeds. Here's the deal. I have a testament to how well this installation went. Um, it was pretty easy. I set up the modem in my little networking rack. I set up the router and I set up the switch. I plugged in four Cat 5e cables. I ran it uh, one line to uh, my office here, the little studio, and I plugged that into a switch so I could plug in multiple devices. I ran one down to my entertainment area uh, so I could put in this wireless access point, the 1510 XAP from Luxel. Uh, and then there's a couple hardwired connections uh, that I'm utilizing for some of my smart home stuff, uh, which don't really need a fast internet connection, but they do utilize bandwidth every time they talk to each other. So for updates, for lighting changes, for check-ins, location check-ins, things like that, these smart homes are utilizing utilizing that. So before I go too far, I want to say this was pretty easy to set up. All I had to do was plug in my computer, log into the router settings, and it had its own guided setup for me. It actually set up the wireless access point to my network, uh, which is something that sometimes manually has to be done, which it's not very hard, but their guided setup made it super easy. They make it sound like this type of Luxel piece of equipment needs a pro to set it up. No, it was actually easier to set up than my Netgear. So let me tell you why I made the switch from Netgear to Luxel. And if you're like me, you're a tech enthusiast and you have things like Hue smart bulbs, you have a computer, you have two TVs in your home, all 4K resolution, streaming all of your content. You may even have a smart speaker or two you have a tablet, you have phones, you have other people coming in and out of your home. Well, maybe not right now, but commonly you do. Well, let's count that up. There's probably 10, 11, 12, 13 devices. I have four smart bulbs alone and two smart, three smart speakers. So right there, that's seven. And those are things that I don't use on a regular basis. If you just add my phones and my tablets, you got 10 devices on your network constantly communicating. Well, what I found was any more than about six devices on this Netgear and my network struggled. On that same internet connection, 200 megabits per second, when I made that switch, and I hope you guys test this out, get yourself some new hardware and see how well it works. But what I did was I installed this. I did absolutely nothing more. I installed this and the very next day there was a 32 gigabyte download <laughs> from Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Of course, that was for the Cold War package they were putting into the game, but nonetheless, my speeds more than quadrupled overnight, just with different hardware, all while my girlfriend was in the other room watching 4K video while streaming on her phone. And I tested it out. I even pulled up a, uh, a bench test, a, a speed test for my, for my network on my phone, and my wireless was still getting 200 plus megabits per second download speed. Pretty wild how it can prioritize that. And I was actually only utilizing 15% of the CPU according to uh, the, the dashboard of the router. That's impressive. So before you go and freak out at the price tag of this, remember a couple things. Remember just how unreliable a small network router can be for you, especially if you have multiple devices. And also remember that if you're paying for high speeds, you're leaving performance on the table. If you have a decent router with gigabit switching capabilities, you could just hardwire everything. You could plug it direct into the router. You could plug it, uh, get a switch, run that switch, run lines from that switch to every device that you have that's hardwired or connected, but it still doesn't really fix the problem uh, of utilizing, you know, lower end uh, streaming devices, tablets, phones, any device that doesn't have direct connect, connect ethernet, it's not going to fix the problem there. It's still gonna bog down the network and it's not gonna prioritize the same. So it's not the same. You're not gonna get beamforming. You're not gonna get multiple input, multiple output antennas. 
especially a 4x4 MIMO antenna. It's just not going to happen on a basic router. But if you want to keep it cheap, you can. And it's probably only going to cost you about $200, but you are going to leave performance on the table. And that is the basis, the premise of this video. If you're leaving performance on the table, there's cash coming out of your pocket that you're spending every single month. And over a period of three to five years, that adds up. And that becomes hundreds, if not thousands of dollars that you're leaving on the table. So why not spend the money now, secure your future, get the five years, 10 years out of the equipment, whatever you want to get out of it as far as year usage, get out of it. We have some fun content coming up very soon. So stay subscribed to the channel because you won't want to miss some of the server builds that we're doing, some of the streaming PC builds that we're doing, some of the you know, content that we're going to be creating around networks, around servers, around local area connection, uh, wireless area connections, things like that, that you don't want to miss. And of course, there's a plethora of, of other content that we're going to be doing here on the channel. So hit that subscribe button, like the channel, share the channel with all your friends and definitely comment if you have any questions below. If you're utilizing any of this equipment, maybe you have a basic system, maybe you have an intermediate system and you have questions and you wanna know what's the best network to buy for your home. Well, comment below. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions here about particular products out there. And I'm not all in on having to spend $1,000 on a particular network. You can spend four, 300 and get a very solid network for your home hardware for your network i should say uh, but please comment below and if you're at that top level and you have great mesh systems and you have uh, good wired internet connections you have network racks and you're going all in well definitely comment below put down your experience in upgrading uh, and what it's done for you so that other people can see i'd love to hear from all you guys but without further ado, you guys, I'm going to end this video because I've been talking for a little while and I'm sure you want me to shut up. So until the next time, you guys, I'll catch you in the next video.